Typically, my gaming dollars are allocated to keeping current with modern gaming's hardware and games. So when I bought these newly made controllers for the Nintendo 64, that was a really uncommon occurrence. This is the Tribute 64, made by Retrobit, and here's the Brawler 64 from Retro Fighters. I'm going to compare and contrast them to see what I like or dislike and try to determine a favorite, so let's get started. Even though its odd design choices have become a meme these days, I for one have never had an issue with the stock N64 controller. It fits my large hands well, it's comfortable, and it works. Really the only thing I think needs improvement is the analog stick as I actually wore my original launch controller out. It got to the point that it always gave a slight up input even when the stick was centered. It seems that Nintendo's problem with analog drift predates the Switch. There are reproduction controllers that mimic this design, but I've heard some of the cheap ones have a lot of quality issues, and besides, I wanted to try an updated design. I picked these up from our friends at Stone Age Gaming, but I did purchase them with my own money. These were not provided for review. I'll do a quick unboxing for each, give a few first impressions, and give them a go at a few different games. Don't expect a review with a lot of technical statistics. This will be more about playability and personal preferences. If you find you'd like to purchase one, I'll have links to each below. Let me show you what the new controllers are replacing. This is an EA Sports Pad Gamepad, easily one of the worst third-party controllers in my entire collection. It's bulky and awkward, the control stick pops off, and worst of all, I have two of them. They have a rubberized finish that was very in vogue in the late 90s and early 2000s. In their day, this actually gave them a pleasingly premium hand feel, but after more than 20 years, the coating is degrading and now they feel tacky, clammy, and gross. These controllers saw a lot of Mario Party and Mario Tennis action, but it's time to retire them for good. So let me unbox my new goodies and give a few first impressions. My suspicion is that I'm going to prefer the Brawler Pad more, so to be fair, I'll start with the Tribute 64. The Tribute 64 takes its design cues from the Hori Mini Pad, a very popular and sought after Japanese exclusive controller. I won't be able to directly compare them as I don't have the Hori Pad. It's highly compact and it ditches the three grip design for a more typical two grip. My suspicions are that the button placement is going to feel cramped, especially considering my larger hands and the placement of the cross pad in the center, very, very near the B and A buttons. Both controllers have a 10 foot cable. This is a good couple of feet longer than the stock cable, so that's an added benefit. With the left thumb having access to both the cross pad and analog stick at the same time, they've had to make the L and Z buttons simultaneously accessible to the left index finger. And for the sake of symmetry, they've done the same with the R and a second copy of the Z on the other shoulder. Both controllers share this compromise. Well, first impressions are pretty favorable. The controller feels pretty substantial, sturdy, with the housing plastic being pretty similar to the stock controller. It doesn't seem to feel that bad in my hands either. Interesting. We'll try some gameplay soon, but first let's unbox the Brawler 64. The Brawler 64 is modeled much more after standard contemporary controllers, but with only one analog stick, obviously. This has a much wider grip than the Tribute, and I suspect it will be more comfortable for me for that reason. Both of these controllers are suitable for games that would use either the analog or digital holding style. I'm not sure how you do the mythical dual control style with these controllers, so for any games that use that control method, these replacements aren't the best choice. The Brawler has an assignable turbo function, a nice extra even though I doubt it'll find much use, other than cheating in Mario Party. I'll have to remember that. First impressions are a little mixed actually. It's comfortable no doubt, but it feels pretty light, like a hollow shell. I'm sure it is mostly hollow, but it's so light it makes it feel, for lack of a better term, a little cheap. Definitely not bad, it just doesn't feel quite as solid as the Tribute 64. Now I'm going to move on to gameplay, but first let's check the fit of these Nintendo 64 accessories. Now the Brawler 64 comes with a small pamphlet that specifically mentions that it isn't compatible with the transfer pack, so we'll keep that in mind. The Tribute 64 doesn't have a book, but the box only mentions the controller pack and rumble pack, and both of these accessories seem to fit in the expansion slot just right. I'll be sure to test their functionality in game. The transfer pack on the other hand does not slide in quite as well. It's a little tight, but it doesn't feel like I'm going to damage anything, so I'll be testing that as well. Similar story on the Brawler. Both accessories fit and release just fine, and the transfer pack does not want to slide in. It only makes it partway in jams. Since they already warned it isn't compatible, I'm literally and figuratively not going to press it. But the play's the thing, so let's see how these controllers tackle actual games. I decided to start with the stock controller just to get a feel for how the new one should control. 
And of course, the first game to test is the game that the controller was designed in tandem with, Super Mario 64. Since I just played Mario 64 to completion recently on Super Mario 3D All-Stars on the Switch, I'm pretty used to how it feels to control at this point. And I'd like to say I think it controls just a little better with the original gated analog stick compared to the Switch Pro controller. So I futzed around in the world for a little while just to get a feel for the standard I'd be comparing the new pads to. Keep in mind that I'm in no way a pro level player. So let's start with the tribute pad. And Mario 64 gave me no troubles at all. I was able to do just as well as with the stock controller. At the Bowser fight, I was able to give the analog stick a bit of a workout and it performed admirably. Next up will be a test for the control pad, and I'm choosing Killer Instinct Gold. This will let me test the accuracy of the pad and whether or not my thumbs will collide in the heat of battle on this small controller. And even though I got a couple of unintended up presses, I think the control pad is performing pretty well. And surprisingly, my hands aren't feeling cramped or confined at all. What a pleasant relief. And I need to test the accessories, so let's put in the Rumble Pack with Star Fox 64. And sure enough, it works just fine. That's good. But there was an unexpected consequence of the new shoulder button configuration. To tilt your R-Wing to the left, you'll hit the left trigger button, which is the Z button. Simple and intuitive. But to tilt to the right, you'll be inclined to use the right trigger button. But the right trigger is also a Z button, and your R-Wing will tilt to the left. You'll need to remember to use the right bumper button, which is R. This can definitely throw you off when playing. This isn't a fault of the controller, it's just the cost of abandoning the three-handle design. You'll have to remember this in other games that use separate L, Z, and R controls, like F-Zero X and Star Wars Episode One Racer. What about the transfer pack? Here's my original Pokemon Blue with Pokemon Stadium. If it works, I should be given the option to play the game on the N64. And it seems it doesn't see it at all. After a couple of attempts, I tried with the original controller. I get an error message, probably because this game's battery is dead, but at least it shows that Stadium can see it, so it seems the tribute isn't compatible with the transfer pack. Lastly, let's just make sure we can read save files from the controller pack. For this, I'll use Diddy Kong Racing, and as advertised, it can connect to the controller pack just fine. Before I explain my full thoughts on the tribute pad, let me go ahead and complete all of these same tests with the brawler. When I went to switch controllers, I did find the tribute is a bit tight in the controller port. It took more effort to remove it than I'm used to. I was really excited to give the brawler a try, but in game I found it to be basically exactly as competent as the tribute pad. I was able to control Mario perfectly fine. The Z buttons on the brawler are spring-loaded triggers, which, while comfortable, are an odd choice. These buttons offer no analog control, so having them as triggers instead of buttons doesn't serve any additional purpose. But upon testing, they activate very early in the throw, so the fact that they're triggers also doesn't interfere with their function, so that's good. Upon testing the control pad, I found it to be just as responsive as before. I didn't really notice any false inputs. The Rumble Pack functions as advertised. The Brawler 64 has the same shoulder layout as previously described, so in Star Fox 64, for instance, you'll need to remember to use the trigger on the left, but the bumper on the right to control your flight maneuvers properly. And finally, the controller has no issues in reading the contents of the controller pack. I know I went through the Brawler 64 segment pretty quickly, but now I'll give my full impressions of both controllers. After spending some time with each, let me highlight some of the differences between the two controllers. The B and A buttons on the Tribute sit a good bit above the controller face and have a good amount of spring to them, while the Brawler buttons sit lower. They have nearly, but not quite the same amount of spring to them. This leads to rapid button presses feeling less tactile and responsive on the Brawler, even though there isn't actually a difference at this point in the controller's life. The control pad on the Tribute is very comfortable. It's smaller, seemingly styled after the GameCube. I like the feel of it slightly more than the Brawler, but it gave me more false reads. I had trouble in games like Dr. Mario 64. Down drops might unexpectedly shift to the side. I didn't have this issue with the Brawler, but after some practice, I was able to better control the Tribute as well. The analog stick on the Tribute also seems inspired by the GameCube. The rubberized rings give a good texture for your thumb to press against. It's very enjoyable and comfortable. The Brawler, on the other hand, lacks this extra feature. If I wasn't directly comparing them, I wouldn't have thought the Brawler was lacking. Its analog stick is perfectly adequate, but I have to admit, the Tribute has an advantage for comfort. 
I'm supposed to pick a winner, but I'll fully admit that when it's time to play, I'm generally more likely to grab the stock controller than either of these. But if I had to choose one, I'm surprised to say I think the Tribute has a slight advantage. With its sturdier feel, ridged analog pad, and more raised buttons, I just like holding it slightly more than the Brawler. And bonus, it's actually a couple of dollars cheaper. The only place it comes up short is possibly in its control pad, and I still suspect that for some hands it may be too small. The mark of a good controller is that when you're playing a game, it just sort of melts away and you barely even notice that you're using it. This is certainly true of both of these pads. Other than the shoulder button confusion, and having to adapt to the Tribute's control pad on the few games that favor digital input. So based on my time with these, regardless of which one you choose, you just can't go wrong. I was also surprised at how inexpensive these were. I've gotten so used to the prices of modern controllers, it's a little tough to remember a time when they were this economical. Thanks for staying to the end, I'd love to know your opinions or preferences. If you're new to the channel, I'm just an average game collector trying to share his passions. Check out my other videos and sub if you like what you see. Be safe and take care. Yeah.